Well, Governor Quinn has signed legislation restoring some $200 million in college financial aid to nearly 140,000 low-income students. Next step is finding money for those grants. Joining me today to talk specifically about strategies on how to plan for your child's education are financial strategist Matthew Sapala. Also with us today is Kathleen Carlson, Vice President for Student Recruitment and Enrollment and planning at St. Xavier University in Chicago. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so but lots to talk about here because I happen to know for a fact that college education, <laughs> and it's no secret, is extremely expensive. And this story has been in the news a lot lately because of uh, the MAP program, right. being the, the future of that being threatened. So Kathleen, why don't you tell us kind of where it stands right now, what it all means okay. for students looking to, to finance their college education. It's extremely important to 130 38,000 students in the state of Illinois, they attend all sectors of higher ed. Right. They're in community colleges, they're in public, they're in private. At a school like St. Xavier, mm -hmm. uh, the MAP grant would be about $4,700 this year, which would be nearly a fifth of the tuition. $4,700 per student. Time for, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So for many, many students to have learned or to have the threat that that money was going to be taken away That's from them. That's huge. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. And, and we did do some um, surveying with our students, and they didn't have many options. Um, these are not students who would have a parent to turn to parent to say even a parent loan. The alternative loans have already been drying up in this particular mm -hmm. climate. They mm -hmm. couldn't turn to that. Um, most of them already are maxed out on subsidized federal loans. Um, they are working, about half of our MAP students are working, half are not. And one of the things we learned is that if MAP was not going to go through, maybe about 10% of the students would not re-enroll, they'd have to stop out. Wow. Um, and we figured that about 200 students at least would be seeking employment in the job market when the job market's already stressed. You multiply St. Xavier times all the other schools, it could you. easily be close to 20,000 uh, new job seekers. This in is this. serious. So, so the fact that the governor has signed it, we're very grateful. And personally, I will not really rest until we know <laughs> that there's money behind Absolutely. it. I think it's a top priority for the state. So one out of 10 students um, college career it's threatened yes yes and exactly these are the nurses these are prospective doctors these are prospective mm -hmm. business people and these are people that's our future uh, for the state economy yes. um, and in times of recession in particular it's always been a time when many more people would come back to school well now we're in a recession right. and for this door to have been blocked um, would have really made a bad situation already. Worse. So have you have you found that there are students there who have said, you know, I just don't have the money to come back? I mean, is it impacting the student population well, on your campus Well, I think, I think they're watching carefully. Mm -hmm. I think we, we hope to retain, um, assuming this goes through, that we will retain most of our, our MAP students. 42% of our students at St. Xavier are on MAP. 42. Wow. We're one of the top in the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. We're a private institution and yet we have one of the highest. Uh, we make uh, quality education affordable, and every other school in the state of Illinois will utilize MAP, uh, and our students depend on MAP. So it's, it's not just St. Xavier, it's, it's everywhere. Well, one of the things, and Matthew, I'm glad that you kind of brought this to my attention a couple of months ago sure. when we were talking about, and you sent me an email about an article that deals with this issue of so many of our students, their college futures being threatened. and so. I'm glad that you're here because you're you can kind of give us some guidelines sure. for those of us with young children like me, or even if we have kids in middle school or, or high school. What are some things that we can begin to do right now so that we can avoid the situation of a lack of state funding and whatnot? What can parents do? Sure. One of my one of my first goals when I was high school senior was enjoying the military. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and time award is very tough yeah. and to, to compromise and I think that your child is going to go into combat. But one of the things that we can do as parents talking to our children is have a conversation early. So plan early. It, it's, it's not for us to say plan early, but have the conversation, have the communication. Find what kind of abilities your, your kid loves to do. Find out, find out what passions they love, because the worst thing you can do to a child is force them into something that you would want them to do. That's right. And they hate it, and they end up mm -hmm. switching majors, and they're in college longer, and they have to pay for them more. So, so the first thing is to plan early. Right. But then you also give some other advice, which I think is interesting. I want you to elaborate. Be, become an attractive student. Sure. Like most colleges, they look at students, okay, listen, what, what kind of grades do you have? Right. You know, th those grades are important. What kind of 
extracurricular activity are you participating? Are you an athlete? Are you part of the uh, the, the yearbook club? Are you type of mm -hmm. leadership role even in your in your school? Schools love to see that. Right. They love to see the combination. So having the ability to show that you're more than just a student, mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. what happens is you're competing with every high school senior in the in the country your age to get to college. Absolutely. And then this seems very obvious, but you make it very clear and you specifically advise people to save for college. Right. You, you know, just because you're, you're in a position that, oh, okay, it's tough, the economy is this, my 401k has done this, my home maker has done that, it still doesn't say that you shouldn't save for college. Mm -hmm. you know, putting away 50 bucks, 100 bucks a month, 500 bucks a month, that birthday money, the Christmas money, it's still important because number one, it establishes a good financial habit. And then number two, when you get to college, if you're in a situation, cash is king. You have options when you have cash. Right, but should we do the five, the 529 or should we just put it away in the savings account? Or, you know, what's the best way to do that? 529 is a great option. Uh, the, the, the mistake earlier this year is that the Illinois, unfortunately, the Illinois program lost 85 million in their bond right. fund. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that is an option. There's many other options, many different financial vehicles, Roth IRAs, maximum funded life insurance contracts. Mm -hmm. Those are other options where people can save in vehicles where it's uh, tax advantage and they can bypass a lot of the uh, taxes down the road. I was going to add something with Matthew. I think, I think the, I, the, the encouragement of your six-year-old now mm -hmm. <laughs> to remain a good student. Right. Um, in most private schools, will give generous scholarships to supplement. Scholarships still exist, Kat? Absolutely. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, in St. Xavier, for every $1 we receive from MAP, the university is giving $1.57, matching that wow. with other scholars. Now, now, how it's allocated depends. The, the better students are going to get better scholarships. Mm -hmm. And in a significant number of our, for our students, the university is actually investing more than the actual parents are paying. When you, when you add up what Pell, when you add up what MAP, our financial aid to come in, very often they actually could be paying less than the university is actually investing in them. Phenomenal. So, so the good student and the good marks are in being the attractive and also mm -hmm. being the fit in the school. I think there are many fine institutions in Illinois. It's finding where are you fit, where, where for your, what you want to do in your future. Good topic. Let's come back after this break and continue coming up more on the topic of financing that college education when we come back. Stay with us. We are giving you tips today on how to save for your kids' college education, or if you're not a kid, if you're an adult, <laughs> we should give them options as well. If you want to go to college, it is possible. Um, yes, funding is, you know, scarce these days, but there is a way to do it, right? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, good. So, Matthew, you've been giving us your six steps. The fourth step is optimizing your assets. What does that mean exactly? Well, more so, it's it's also calculating what your expected family contribution mm -hmm. is, what mom and dad is supposed to help pay the kids to college, and how you fight figure sure. that out mm -hmm. is by helping submit that FAFSA form. Mm -hmm. FAFSA stands for Federal uh, Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, most people say, well, I make too much money or I'm not saving enough. I'm not going to get aid anyway. Mm -hmm. Don't forgo that. That's free money. Submit that right. and you'll find out. You agree, Kathleen, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. And, and then you say calculate? Sure. Calculate and also at the same time assess and optimize your assets find out find out exactly okay if I have home equity between a public and a private university they may look at that as an asset or as what they call a countable mm -hmm. asset mm -hmm. which may either qualify or disqualify you to disqualify you for more aid mm -hmm. uh, certain assets like uh, money in the bank uh, yes. uh, is my assets in a situation where uh, it's going to help my kid to go to college or is it going to compromise my own financial security many people are worrying about that do I send my kid to college sacrifice my own mm -hmm, financial future mm -hmm. So sitting down with a specialist to figure that out is it, at this point is very important. Excellent point because I always say whenever you're on this program that it, it, it speaks to the importance of us having financial advisors. It's very important so someone like you can figure all that out. But I mentioned earlier, Kathleen, that a college education is somewhere around $100,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's on the high end, but the average is more like what? Well, the yearly average tuition uh, for privates are going to be anywhere between 25 and 30, but you're going to get some higher end schools, mm -hmm. 35, 40, you're more selective, more elite institutions. Right. And then you also say that many of the private institutions will still offer scholarships. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I'd say the majority of private schools will have scholarships available for the good students. And mm -hmm. this is coming back to sure. be a good student. And that starts when you're six years old and coming all through high school. Yes. And expecting college. Exactly. Expecting that your kids will want to go to college and planning for that future. 
All right, any closing remarks real quick? Before one closing remark, you know, uh, one of the items, uh, one of the guests on our, on our show came on and actually said they were blessed to have the information. They uh, There's actually schools right now that's going to give a free college scholarship right now, and if they can uh, access our website, they can find out sure. how to get that. So What's if they website? go to uh, moneysmartradio.com or mm -hmm. matthewsapala.com. Excellent. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Very important information. All right. <laughs>